When I first started looking into fake news last year, uh, I did so because I was angry. I mean, who were these jerks who sullied my craft? But the more I read about it and thought about it, the more I realized that uh, the important thing about fake news is not what it tells us about its perpetrators, but what it tells us about ourselves. Um, I'm not here to make uh, journalists into heroes. We're normal people. We have biases. We, have, uh, we make mistakes. <clears throat> but I am here to defend journalism. Uh, it's the art of getting the story right uh, in spite of our flaws. So finding the facts and the truth, I think that's very important. Uh, and in the age of social media, we're all journalists. We're all part of the business of distributing the news and commentating on the news at a, at a bare minimum. So we rely on you and you rely on us to get the story right and to get the right story. Now, <clears throat> It is debatable how much effect any one particular piece of fake news can sway public opinion, for instance. But I think, uh, I, I really have come to believe that the way we react to corrosive behaviors like fake news are, is what is going to determine the course of this nation. Are we going to split into permanent uh, red and blue nations that cannot, get agree, cannot agree with each other or at each other's throats, maybe even become a permanent split? Or are we going to maintain or recreate some kind of common base of factual information from which to operate? So what is fake news? It's very simple. It's, it's just made up stuff masquerading as news. So it has that... Uh, authoritative voice uh, and structure of a news story, but with no discernible facts or sources or quotes uh, that you can actually track down. But that's really just sort of the bottom of the barrel of unreliable news uh, that we face all the time. So that can range from amusing or even instructive satire and parody all the way down to um, vicious efforts to destroy someone's character or to, even to sway the election or undermine democracy. Uh, what it's not, what fake news is not, is information that you disagree with or that makes you look bad. Another thing that it's not is it's not a new phenomenon. Uh, we've always had fake, excuse me, we've always had fake news. Um, it's only, it's only newly interesting because of this election cycle. So if you'll bear with me, I'd like for you to think about news and even information altogether the way you would your water supply. So it's, it's a common thing that we all need. It's a critical resource, right? <clears throat> so instead of nourishing your body, it nourishes your mind. Uh, we use it to wash the civic dishes, so to speak, and flush away the bad stuff sometimes. But if it's contaminated, you're going to get sick if you consume it too much. I think that this recent pandemic of fake news, especially 2015, 2016, indicates that we have a sick infra information infrastructure. Uh, it's just... And why is that important? If you can't trust the news, if you can't trust the information that's coming at you, then how do you know whether, for instance, your elected leaders are doing good or doing evil? Uh, is global warming real or should we just go ahead and burn all the coal? We need a common point of reference based on fact that, from which we can all operate. Um, we, we need to know what's going on around town or around the world. How big of a deal is fake news? It's, experts disagree. Um, it is, it's hard to tell how much effect any particular piece of fake news has on 
you know, public opinion or on a, an individual person. Uh, but I think what that tells us is just how difficult it is to pin down facts and the truth at times. Sometimes it's cut and dried, but many times it's not. And uh, we need our faculties in order to process information. A little bit more on that in a minute. What are the motives of people who produce fake news? Well, as there are a lot of different types of people who produce fake news, there, uh, there are a lot of motiv motivations as well. You might have shoddy journalism where somebody is faking stuff in order to make his story look better. Uh, you might have uh, political partisanship where you're just trying to win an election. And you can also have, uh, you know, at the worst, you can have Russia, basically, or us to other countries trying to undermine their governments or their democracies. Uh, so you think of it as sort of a range of malevolence. So from the, the least wor worrisome to the, oh my God, we're in trouble, <laughs> worrisome. <laughs> So what's really interesting to me, though, is why fake news is so freaking hard to resist. It's so juicy, right? I mean, I've, I've caught myself, or, or I've been caught, passing along information that turned out to be, have no basis. Uh, it's just easy to do. Well, there's a couple of, couple of major reasons. One, our internal defenses are kind of in trouble right now. There's just too much information out there and we can't deal with it all. We're not evolved to accept that much data coming in. So we tend to hunker down and become more emotional thinkers than rational thinkers. Uh, and we're more easily provoked to anger. <clears throat> so we become more and more outraged all the time and we hunker down even more and become more defensive and we're sort of peering at this, this dangerous world through these narrow emotional filters. Well, what gets through those filters the best is fake news because it can be tuned to fit the exact emotional hole that you have left. And then of course it hits you right in your emotions. It creates this unvirtuous cycle uh, where you, you get to where you can only accept information that fits your narrow worldview, and of course it provokes you to, to have more of the same reaction, and you share, 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 share. Now, this is not particular to any um, political philosophy, this, or, you know, team that you follow, or anything else. Uh, anybody is susceptible to this. Like for eight years, conservatives were outraged by Obama's very existence and then by Hillary's campaign. <clears throat> and fake news that was marketed towards those conservatives became, it, it just flourished. It, it exploded like a, an algae bloom in a pond. Uh, now that Trump is in office, we see a similar situation with liberals where you, you now have fake news that is tailored for angry liberals to share. So anybody can, can fall into that trap. So at the same time, our external defenses are also down. In America, we, we don't trust our institutions very much, and that trust is on the decline. Uh, that is also true for journalism as an institution. And believe me, <clears throat> it's a little pompous, but we journalists really like to think that we are guardians of the truth. Uh, the thing is, if you can't trust the news, if you can't trust journalists, who do you trust? Well, you trust people who are on your team, right? In your tribe, uh, pe people who've got your back. Unfortunately, frequently those people are, they may be more interested in winning the fight than in getting the story right. At the same time, the news industry in particular is really on the ropes. Uh, our <laughs> newspaper revenues have plummeted, staffs have been cut, uh, the best journalists have been let go, so we put out thinner, shoddier product, uh, and when we make more errors, it doesn't reflect well on us. And finally, since the 1950s, when segregationists 
came up with the term the liberal media to attack mainstream journalism, uh, you know, there's just been this constant drumbeat. Uh, and you see it on Fox News. If you ever turn on Fox News, you're going to hear the liberal media at some point in the next 20 minutes, probably, uh, or Rush Limbaugh. So there's an entire swath of America now that simply cannot trust journalists. So <laughs> what am I doing about to fix all that? Um, in our own very small local way, uh, we are trying to nudge journalists and readers a little closer together. Um, entourage is basically it's a, an occasional outing where we, we bring together journalists and non-journalists to attend an event together uh, to talk about the news uh, and then to share that back, uh, hopefully to get some kind of a conversation going online while we're doing it. Uh, breaking down those barriers between professional journalists and all the rest of us who are journalists by default. And Anthology is our five-day-a-week email newsletter that I curate from 22 local sources. Some of them are traditional, conventional journalists, but some of them are not. They're uh, super citizens, they're bloggers, they're people who want to carry on the torch of legitimate journalism in these, you know, what seemed to us, to, especially to journalists, seem like really dark times. The bottom line, the takeaway is we need each other to get the story right. Thank you.